Okay, now, I, I can see some worries in you about the, lab, the diagram that I'm drawing here. Remember, all I'm doing this, the one reason I'm doing this in an abstract kind of way is to explain the, no, the notion of emergent property, to give you very concrete examples of what emerges and why a community is made out of people. It's literally made the people are its component parts in addition to the buildings and the streets of the, of the neighborhood or in addition to the servers and computers in the case of a, of a virtual community and here the same thing too people are the component parts of organizations in addition to the building in which the organization operates and the fax machines and typewriters and desks and other things that the organization may have there but of course, the, the persons are the most important component of the organization because the moment the persons stop obeying, if everybody rebels and the following day no one follows orders, that organization doesn't function anymore. So you can change your fax machines, you can change your desk, but persons are still the most important component. Someone like that? Ideology, if you want. Perhaps it's the most basic Hello? component then. No. Well, if it's how they follow the rules, Ideology is also important. That's what I said. One source of legitimacy is a tradition. A tradition in a sacred text. A tradition in some kind of form that says the king is the king because God wanted to be the king. That's one form of ideology, right? So I did include it. It's just it's not written in a piece of paper, for God's sake. You're giving me such a hard time. What is wrong with you people? Work with me. Work with me. Jesus freaking Christ. Okay, let's try to move on. Well, first of all, no. Anyone has a gun or something? Okay, guys, um, um, this is just a sketch, right? It's just a sketch. Any of this needs to then be up. When, when we apply it to a historical explanation, remember that's how I started the class, to an answer to why questions. Why did the economic crisis start? Why, you know, any kind of why question. All I want is that in our answers to the why questions, we only bring entities that we have shown emerge in a very concrete and clear way. So all I'm showing right now is I'm illustrating the concept of emergent property. That's all. When we apply this to an actual case, as we will do tonight, then we will have to say, well, in this particular region of the planet and in this particular set of decades, that is, in this particular spatial-temporal uh, 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 part of, time, you know, of history, there were these organizations, there were these communities, there were these things, and that's how they interacted, and now we can bring all the different elements and put them in context, in a real context. Right now, everything is floating in a kind of abstract way, but at the very least, it's showing us that Remember, uh, for a lot of social thinkers, they tend to think in terms of the individual, you know, person, and society, right? Microeconomics, for instance, is all about rational decision-making by individuals. Macroeconomics is about overall rate of unemployment, overall rate of inflation, overall gross national product at the level of the whole society. And they leave out all the intermediate levels. What I'm trying to include here is all those intermediate levels before we get to the largest level of all to show you that there are many different levels at which explanations can be framed. Okay? Why did Napoleon lose at Waterloo? We're going to have to talk about persons like Napoleon. We're going to have to talk about communities because his soldiers were citizens, citizen soldiers that came from specific communities in France and that wanted to fight because they had nationalistic feelings about defending the mother, you know, country, or the motherland. But we also need to talk about organizations because he was running an army. The French army was an old organization, 300 years old already by the time Napoleon took it over. So he was an entity with some history, and so on. So the question is, once, once we start giving explanations, and I'm not giving explanations now, but tonight, I just want to make sure that everybody understands that I'm only going to be using entities that we have considered are not ready five generalities, but concrete individuals. This community, that community. This institutional organization, that institutional organization, and so on. So, let me move on 
to say, well, once communities emerge, and they have, in particular, they have a certain amount of solidarity, now they can begin interacting with one another as entities. Of course, communities always interact via a representative. You know, you send a representative, you talk to the representative of the other community, but it doesn't, and that is important, but you could have sent another representative, and still it would be the two communities. In any case, the persons that do the interaction are representing their whole community. Maybe they were elected by their community to represent them. And therefore, they are not just persons. They are persons in the role of representatives of their whole communities. 